you've probably noticed a lot of local area rapid transits. There's uh, BART, Bay Area Rapid Transit. If you live in Springfield, they probably call it SART, uh, and so on and so forth. Area Rapid Transit is what they're saying. In the local area where near where I live, the I'm going to call it that area rapid transit, THART, or TART, I guess it would be. Uh, TART recently began offering a new service, which is TART On Demand. And this is... 100% a taxi service or ride share or whatever you want to call it. This is when you can have the government come to your house and pick you up and take you to the bar or grocery store or wherever it is that you want to go. And it was a greatly reduced rate. It's being subsidized. And I wanted to chat a bit about the economic ramifications of this, that the harm that it is, this is doing. Um, this is probably one of the most anti-free market, anti-capitalism things that the government has done, at least in the last five or ten years. Uh, and when I'm saying uh, the thing that they have done, I, I'm talking about a new program they have developed. They've actually, they've definitely done things that are much worse. However, this is the the new program that I think is one of the the most obviously anti-humanity, anti-capitalism. The reason that this is such a bad idea is that we, we have to look at how, how things are funded, how things come about. So in a free market, if a person wants to be in the transportation industry, they probably start out by buying, renting, leasing a mode of transportation, a car, a rickshaw, a bus, whatever. And then the other person who needs a ride contacts them, they negotiate a price, and the person with the, the, the vehicle gives the other person a ride from point A to point B at this agreed upon market rate. <clears throat> Part of what is inherent in that free market system is the, the natural price Control, we'll call it. It isn't the right word, but the, the price is arrived at through voluntary agreement. And so the the person who is going to do the transporting and the person who wants to be transported come together on a price. And the person getting transported wants to pay less and the person transporting wants to get paid more. However, they come to this happy medium. Now, this isn't a conversation that they probably have negotiating back and forth for five or ten minutes. However, it is done behind the scenes. So the one taxi company will say, you know, we give this ride for $10. The other one says they give it for $12. And if the one giving it for 10 is also clean and safe and all the other things, then people will tend to go for the $10 one. Somebody else starts up one that's even a little bit better. They maybe offer you a free water while you're on the ride and they charge $11. And the market works it out. The, the customers and the, the purveyors of the service work it out. This system is, frankly, the system that works best for humanity. Well, what are your values? Is your value that you want a system that works best for humanity? Do you want a system that costs the very least for riders, uh, for the people being transported? Do you want a system that uh, pays the transporter the most amount of money? It kind of depends on what your value system is. So the reason I bring that up is when I say it does the most good for humanity, well, that's a subjective value. Maybe to you, you don't want what is best for humanity according to the, the measures that I I, that I think are the good ones, that I subjectively think are the good ones. So what arguments are there against having this TART uh, on-demand service? Well, anytime you introduce more of something to an economy, the value goes down. Uh, so if you have a, val a village that has... Uh, 50 men and 50 women. And uh, we're going to say there are 50 unwed or single men and 50 unwed and single women. That's a 
pretty fair, you know, everybody can find someone else. If, however, we introduce 50 more men into the mix, now men have become much less valuable. Now they're worth about half as much as they were worth before. And this is a a raw human example, but we can look at this with just about anything in life. Uh, cars, uh, hamburgers. If you're getting, if you can get twice as much of, if there are twice as much of something is introduced to an, an area, then the price of that thing will probably go down. Well, this is a way of, it's not theft. It's not violating the rights. But it's kind of, I guess, screwing over would be the correct economics terminology. It is screwing over the people who were there first. Now, when would this be okay? Well, this would be okay if someone started up their own company and they spent their own hard-earned money or gifted money, whatever. If they spent their own money, peacefully, voluntarily acquired money, to start up a business knowing that they might be successful, they might fail, they need to satisfy their clients, etc. Well, that would be acceptable, even if it caused other people to get a smaller percentage of the uh, uh, the rides, the the selling the service. They're not they're not getting as much business as they did before. But that's acceptable because everything was voluntary. What makes it so wrong for Tart to come in and destroy the lives of many local free market service providers. What makes it wrong is the the foundation or, or the place from which funding comes for this subsidized service. Where does this subsidized uh, money come from? The subsidies come from governments and non-government organizations. Well, we're going to we're just going to say that the NGOs, the non-government organizations, they get their money from governments. So way way less than 1% of the money that is used to subsidize your local area rapid transit comes from voluntary peaceful money. In other words, donations from billionaires or poor people, the actual cost of the ride, you know, the, I, I think the one of the local ones is a dollar or two to, to ride for 10 miles. Well, that money does go into the operating budget. But it's, it's so minuscule that it just, it doesn't even, yeah. It, we're going to kind of almost, we, we can almost ignore that because it's a, it's a rounding error. It's so tiny. So where does this money come from? Well, it comes from governments. How do governments get their money? They get their money from taxation or by providing quote-unquote services. They'll claim a piece of land like a national park and then say that you can't come through that road unless you pay them money. Uh, so they can make some money that way, but most of the money that they generate is through some sort of extortion or, or uh, they call it taxation, but it's either saying you can't ship your things into our country unless you pay us, you know, slide off a couple bucks for us. And, well, if you two are going to sell each other a car, slide off a couple bucks for us. If you are going to earn money uh, when you get your paycheck, slide off a few bucks to us. Uh, so there's kind of this, they call it in, in Mexico, they call it mordida, uh, bite of the dog. Um, but there's this, this extortion, this theft of a, a percentage of money that is transferred between human beings. This concept, this this practice is just wrong by every measure. Uh, and, and frequently when, I, when I'll when i explain this to someone, and I, I'm trying to explain, this is my perspective. Am I wrong in some way? And the person will explain to me the benefits of how that money that is stolen is spent. Well, that's another topic. Like, let's jot that down on a yellow pad and we'll talk about it some other time. But first, let's finish this conversation. And this conversation is, is it okay to take money from other people non-voluntarily? Well, no. And, and it's, it, it seems that the only arguments I hear are, yeah, but that money would be spent in a way that I like and I think is important or necessary. 
Well, that's not an argument for why theft is okay. Like, I wouldn't say to a, if I'm a carjacker and somebody says, hey, you shouldn't be robbing our robbing us, taking our car. I'd be like, oh, it's okay. I'm going to spend the money on things that I think are very important. Well, that doesn't make it okay. What if I did carjack somebody and I take this $50,000 car and I sell it for $10,000 at, uh, at the chop shop and then I take that $10,000 and, and donate it to a, a charity that almost everybody agrees would be wonderful. Like, let's say a disabled kids who are orphans house. I donated all $10,000 to that house. Is it then okay that I'm a carjacker? Would you say, hey, you know what? It would be moral for you to go out tomorrow and carjack another car. Of course not. That's not okay. Doing something bad just because our, we make an excuse that it's going to be okay in the long run doesn't make it okay. And so this this whole little segue we've gone on to examine how local area, this area, rapid transit, local area, rapid transit how they get their subsidized funds, we, we can't even allow that money to get into their pockets because it's not morally acceptable money. So then we say, okay, well, let's say they're not going to accept stolen money, tax, taxes money. They're not going to do that to pay the salaries of the drivers and such and for the equipment and the storage and all of the, all the expenses, fuel, maintenance, if we're not going to steal money to do this, how then would that be funded? Would it be funded? And, and I've racked my brain and I, I can't think of a way that it would be funded. Like if it would be funded, then the free market would have done it. There would have been someone in the free market that says, aha, I have a business plan. I'm going to hire some drivers and... We're going to have these buses driving around for 24-7 and we're going to accept $1 in payment. And at the end of the day, we will have brought in $100 from all of our different riders. We will have paid each driver $150. We bought the bus for $280,000. We have a full-time mechanic taking care of the our fleet of buses or our one bus. And so all told, maybe it costs us $2,000 a day between staffing and maintenance and the, the lease on the, the property where we have this bus. We have to keep it inside climate controlled at night uh, or, you know, between shifts so that it's not getting beat up by the weather. So it's, it's costing $2,000 a day and our income is $100 a day. Um, if some private small business entrepreneur said, hey, I think that makes a lot of sense. This is a good idea. Then they would have done it. But they obviously, anyone who is not spending money that isn't theirs, anybody with a, a rational mind looks at this and says, wait, this doesn't work. Isn't there a better way to do this? Uh, if I'm going to start this business, I've got to work something else out. And then they figure out, Okay, I'll buy a used car that gets good gas mileage. I'm going to work on uh, getting a, a degree in engineering or plumbing or whatever. And while I'm doing that self-study thing at home, I'll be waiting when my phone dings. I'll race down, grab somebody, take them somewhere. It's going to take me 40 minutes to do, so less than an hour. I needed a break anyway. I'm getting good gas mileage. The price is enough that it's, it's, it's working out for me. Well, that's what happens in the free market. That's why there's Uber. That's why there's Lyft. That's why taxis were a big thing for a long time. And, and people still use taxis. That that's works. It's a free market thing and it works. Now, if you're arguing that, yeah, but to have a, a taxi permission slip from the government uh, in New York, a medallion, you know, they were spending over a million bucks to buy one just to have the right to have this, this business. Well, no, that's not free market. That's, that's the government coming in and doing the mordida thing, taking a little bite out of it. That's just like property taxes or or sales tax or income tax or any of the other taxes. That's just the government stealing money. So I think as, a, as our winding path has tried to explore ways in which it might be morally acceptable, ways in which it actually makes sense 
for human beings to try get themselves transported and to transport other people and 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 have fair dealings with each other. I I, I am trying to think of other good arguments for a local area rapid transit existing, especially their on-demand kind of service. And probably in your area, there's something similar that's either going to be started soon or has been going on for a little while. And I, 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 here's an argument. I, I guess this could be an argument that someone, if someone was not familiar with economics, they might say that an Uber ride from here to there is $15. And some people don't have enough money. And it's not because they've spent it on McDonald's meals or, or something else foolish like that. But it's because they legitimately haven't created a a valuable enough person of themselves that they can demand a high enough salary or, or hourly wage to be able to pay that. And maybe they have a little bit lower IQ or, or maybe they're missing a limb or something like that. And so they can't afford $15 to go from here to there. Well, that kind of tugs at my heartstrings. And I'm thinking, well, gosh, here's this monoplegic who isn't that bright, who is just trying to survive on this rock just like I am. And, and I have the benefit of being smart and having two able arms. And, and yeah, I feel for this person. And I wish they could get from point A to point B and have it not, you know, have them go broke doing so or have them have to skip this trip, whatever it is. However, I can't imagine the, the criminal mindset, the, I guess, a sociopathic it would be to say, because I want this thing, because I want this person to go from point A to point B, I am willing to have my wishes satisfied by having another third party steal money from my neighbors to pay for this to happen? What kind of sick bastard would I have to be to think that that is morally acceptable? No way. That is so wrong. Now, another argument for the free market argument could be that, hey, we shouldn't do this because this is putting taxi cab drivers out of business. This is putting Uber people out of business. Well, I would like to warn against that argument. That is, in fact, the probable and the actual end result of subsidy, government subsidy, uh, transportation solutions. However, that argument in and of itself is not acceptable. Because if our foundation for things is, is peace and, and not initiating violence against other people and fairness, etc., if that, those are high values to us and that's what we want to achieve, then we can't say that because the result of something is something I dislike, that thing is not okay. And, and here's an example. What if this person with only one arm, who isn't that bright, is just sick of not being able to afford to be able to get from point A to point B, and they dedicate themselves to getting a driver's license and borrowing a benevolent neighbor's car, and they want to start this rideshare service. They want to be an Uber or a Lyft driver. Well, this person is the person who is now going to suffer. They're trying to pull themselves up out of poverty, trying to make something out of their life, and there is somebody two minutes away from them who wants to go to a place that's a 10 minute drive away. And that person could either contact an Uber driver or the government. And if you can contact the government and get the ride for two bucks or contact the Uber driver and get it for 15 or 20 bucks, what are you going to do? Now, if this new driver that's coming onto the scene is borrowing the car and this person says, hey, I'm not going to just give you money. I can't afford to keep doing this, but you're welcome to use my car. I'm an old retired person, just as long as I have it on Wednesday afternoons so I can go grocery shopping and, and Fridays so I can go down to the mosque or whatever. But I want to help you out and help yourself to using it. Just keep it to under a thousand miles a month and go out and do your thing. Well, maybe because the overhead is so low for this uh, dimwit monoplegic Maybe they can offer way less than $15 for the ride. Maybe they start their own rideshare service and just let people in the community know, hey, 
Um, I'll give you rides for only five bucks or only 10 bucks. Well, that is perfectly acceptable, but they can't do that. There, there's some sort of, uh, the local government will certainly have taxi cab regulations. You have to come in and spend money to get a permit and you have to prove that this and that and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not, that's not free market for sure. Who is being hurt by the government competing and restricting their access to this type of work? The poor person with one arm who isn't that bright and, and they're, the deck is stacked against them. They're trying to pull themselves up and make something happen, and it ain't working. The government isn't letting it work. And so that example of, well, we should have government transportation so that this person can get onto the wagon or or not have to pull his own wagon, or, or uh, it was that Disu Souza or somebody like that who... Uh, Dinesh Souza, who came up with that. He, say, he says, you know, there, there are some people who are on the wagon and some people who are pulling the wagon. And the goal is to get more people pulling the wagon than being on the wagon. It's not a perfect example or analogy, uh, but there are producers in the world. There, there are the, the producers and then there are the takers. And I like the idea of this person being a, a producer, producing value in the world. And they, they could do it if it were not for government. So the argument that we would rather this person be a taker than a producer, and as a taker, they can't afford a $15 fare, so therefore, they should. it is acceptable for the government to steal money from people so that the government can provide a $2 ride so that this person remains a taker, that is pretty, like I'm, I'm stuttering over my words trying to say it. Like that is a pretty messed up low IQ argument, in my opinion. A am I missing something here? Is there something about calling the government when you want to ride to McDonald's that seems somehow acceptable to you? If so, and if I'm missing something, if there's some glaring thing that that is a logical, rational, reasonable if we look at the science of economics and, and sociology and anthropology, if we look at the human condition and the thinking around it, am I, am I wrong here? If so, please correct me. I will, I will make it be the top comment so that everyone who looks at this can see it. As a matter of fact, I'll make a whole new uh, piece of content explaining why I'm wrong and why I've been corrected and there's a better idea that achieves my desired ends of a peaceful, voluntary, free market society.